Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Basic Network Concepts Part 2. Today we're going to be talking about network transmission concepts, and then we're going to conclude with CSMACD and CSMACA. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin with network transmission concepts. The first concept is wavelength. Wavelength is a measurement of the distance between peaks in a wave pattern emitted by electromagnetic radiation, as in light waves, radio waves, or microwaves. Each type of electromagnetic radiation falls into a specific range of wavelengths. By modifying a wavelength, data can be encoded into the wavelength and transmitted to a receiving device which then decodes the transmission. Then there's baud rate and bit rate. The baud rate was originally used to measure the speed of a telegraph transmission. It is a measure of the number of state changes in a given period of time. The usual state change that was measured was electricity, as in the number of times the state changed from 0.5 volts to 1.5 volts. The bit rate is a measure of the number of zeros and ones that can be transmitted across a medium in a given period of time. So it is a measure of the actual bits that can be transmitted. It is usually measured in bits per second or BPS. The bit rate is a more accurate measure of transmission throughput than the baud rate. Then there's sampling size. When converting from an analog audio signal to a digital signal, a computer or other device captures the analog audio waveform and mathematically converts the captured sample into different wavelengths, which is how we get the discrete sounds. This occurs over a specific period of time, which is called the size of the sample or the sampling size. And finally, there's carrier detect and carrier sense. Carrier detect is when a device can only tell when a carrier signal or channel is present by the reception of a control signal. The presence of the control signal signifies that transmissions can occur. The control signal controls the order of transmissions so data collisions are not possible. The control signal can also be used to establish the maximum speed of the transmission that can be used. Carrier sense is when a device uses feedback from a receiver to determine if a carrier channel is present. If a carrier signal is detected, the device can send transmissions. Data transmission collisions are possible with carrier sense. And that logically leads us into CSMACD and CSMACA. The carrier detect method of network transmission works well when there are just a few nodes that need to be connected together. However, as the number of nodes that need to transmit increase, the efficiency of carrier detect begins to decrease to the point where it can become unmanageable. Although the carrier sense method of network transmission is not as efficient when the scale of the network is small, as the number of nodes increases, it becomes more efficient than the carrier detect method. So let's talk about CSMACD or carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. CSMACD of course uses the carrier sense method of network transmission. Every device on the network uses feedback from a receiver to determine if a carrier channel is present. Every device connected to the network has an equal opportunity to place a transmission on the carrier channel. That's the multiple access part of the name. Before placing a transmission on the carrier channel, a device will listen to the channel to determine if another node is transmitting. If it detects a signal on the carrier channel, the node will wait before attempting to transmit. If no signal is detected, the node is free to send. If two devices send a transmission at the same time, a collision between the transmissions is possible. Sending devices will listen for transmission collisions. If a collision is detected, a jamming signal is sent informing all nodes that a collision has taken place. 
All devices that receive the jamming signal will wait for a random amount of time before attempting to transmit. Now let's talk about CSMA-CA, or Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance. CSMA-CA operates in the same manner as CSMA-CD with one exception. It uses a collision avoidance scheme through the use of a controlling device. Before attempting to send data, a device will place a specific signal on the network called a request to send packet, or RTS packet. If no other device is utilizing the network, the controlling device will respond with another specific signal called a clear to send packet, or CTS packet. Once the sending device receives the CTS, it knows it can send a transmission without a collision occurring. CSMACD is better suited for high-speed, high-throughput networks and is the specified network transmission standard for the 802.3 Ethernet networking standard, as it has a low amount of network overhead. CSMA-CA is better suited for lower speed, lower throughput types of networks where the possibility of data collision is higher. It is the specified standard for 802.3 wireless networks or Wi-Fi networks. Now that concludes this session on Basic Network Concepts Part 2. I began with network transmission concepts and I concluded with a brief discussion on CSMA-CD and CSMA-CA. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.